What's up, everybody? Isaac here, Civil Engineering Academy. Excited to be with you on another podcast episode. Thanks for checking us out, giving us a like, a subscribe, a share, whatever you do. If you have some civil friends, share the episode with them. We like sharing this stuff and we like doing it. But uh, today I actually bring another guest that was a previous guest in our show, Brandon McGill. He's actually a recruiter for NES and specializes in geotechnical and land development. So engineers that are found in that world. But the tips and tricks and advice that he has really apply apply across all the disciplines within civil engineering. So I wanted to bring him back on and get the flavor of the market today, see what he's seeing, industry trends, tips and advice for you, whether it's resume or interview, working with a recruiter uh, themselves. So all of these things I wanted to just kind of revisit and see where things are at in today's market. So Brandon McGill jumps on, he's with NES. They specialize in recruiting for engineers, specifically for geotech. You're going to enjoy these tips and tricks. It's going to be coming up right after this. See you in a minute. All right, Brandon, we are live. We're rocking and rolling. Thanks for joining me today on the Civil Engineering Academy podcast as a repeat guest. Always a pleasure, sir. It's uh, it's always fun to bring you on. I have enjoyed your content you're producing there on LinkedIn. I know um, others do too, maybe from the shadows. Yeah. But... The, from the back of the room, I get the people that tell me off off camera that hey i see your stuff yes for sure well uh, maybe, maybe we could talk about that a little bit uh, you know it's tough for engineers probably to go like cruder stuff maybe it shows that yeah they're interested in another <laughs> option out yeah there. i mean it's yeah i mean and with anybody i mean not just from the engineer side it's like they you always be mindful of your career and is is conversing with a uh recruiter publicly something that you want to put out there you know so a little sensitive yeah it's a little sensitive so dm him dm yeah yeah shoot me shoot me a message I'm, i don't hide my cell phone or my uh my number you can call and text me at so <laughs> well good deal well i wanted to bring you back on uh i know we've had you on in the past just to talk about in general uh recruiting but yeah maybe um talk a little bit about um for maybe those that don't know you talk about I guess your your history a little bit, who you're working for, and then yeah, what are there any industry changes or trends that you're seeing right now out there? Uh, so first and foremost, uh, obviously, I'm Brandon McGill. Uh, my specialty in recruiting is geotechnical, and I also do some land development, site civil uh, recruiting. Um, we work all over the country, even into Canada. So I will say North America. Uh, okay. Again, geotechnical, site civil. And that's been our specialty. I mean, the thing that we really hang our hat on is that we really understand our niches and the conversations we're able to have versus our competitors are a lot more meaningful because we do understand it and we're able to find higher quality candidates and put higher quality candidates in front of our clients because we understand the space very well. So that's what we hang our hat on. And what's the website there to find you at any yes? Yeah, so you can always, um, my personal LinkedIn, which is just the Brandon McGill, and then a slash, or the LinkedIn slash Brandon McGill. Awesome. Okay, we'll dive into a little bit about industry trends. What are you seeing out there, maybe since the last time we talked? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's really interesting right now in this space. I mean, it's, it's not a lot of major changes, but I would say that those mid-level engineers are still the ones that are the unicorns in the geotechnical and even site civil space. Those, you know, four to 10 year guys like just got PE about to get their PE to those 10 year guys from not quite, you know, senior or senior project manager level, but they have, they can have enough experience for project management or kind of starting to get into the senior technical side of things that's kind of been our main window that clients are coming to us, asking us for that help. And yeah, you know, that's what we specialize in finding. So hmm. everything, everything from those junior engineers, I just had a guy yesterday just text me, said he accepted an offer and that was a seven year licensed PE registered geologist. Um, so, I mean, we're, we're playing with a lot of different people in a lot of different places throughout the country. And that seems to be the typical, highest need is those mid-level licensed engineers. Awesome. Yeah. So um, in terms of trends, though, you haven't seen anything being led up on um, the need for engineers that are out there as a, as a 
No, I would say it, it's held fairly consistent. Demand in the space has been high for a while now. Um, mm-hmm. I would say the thing that's been trending the most is that hybrid work environment aspect. I mean, that mentality of companies that, you know, now that COVID is over or whatever you want to consider that, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, that, that aspect the mentality has changed. A lot of people have gone back to, we need these people in the office more often, especially for those junior engineers. Um, you know, that those COVID years hurt those younger engineers that they couldn't be around the senior leadership as much for the mentorship side. So those now senior leaders, like, man, we saw that gap and it didn't, it didn't help. It, maybe, maybe it didn't hurt, but it definitely didn't help progress some of these junior engineers to really get them on pace where they need to be in their career. Yeah. And that's where they're wanting to get people back in. That's where hybrids becoming more of a thing where they can see them be, be around them um, and mentor them, but then also give them some leash to go do what they need to do and learn on their own. Yeah. I've noticed that usually more senior engineers want more remote stuff yeah. available to them. And yeah, that that's shifted too. I mean, kind of those senior guys, they've gotten used to it now too. And they're like, well, I've, I've done this now remotely for two years. Why don't, why do I need to be in the office every day? Right. And it's, uh, well, you know, I understand it. And usually what I tell those guys is like, well, if you're in a leadership position, it's really hard to leave lead if you're absent. Right. So, yeah, I've noticed, uh, you know, when you're in an office, it's kind of these water cooler moments. It's like mm-hmm. the issue that the engineer has next to you that you're learning from because they're going through it. Like you're, and even you, you know, whatever design you're doing. Yeah. Those are the kind of moments you don't really get on a team's meeting because yeah. you have to make a call to hear what the heck's going on around the office. Yep. So or just miss those. So the the pricelessness of having that not not in a micromanage way, but that that over the shoulder guidance. So like you have that senior person that can say, Hey, this isn't isn't quite right. We make these changes, this is how it should be done and can truly help you while you're sitting there with them. You That's know? true. And I and I and I get it. Like Engineers want flexibility. That's what we want. Yeah. So if we want to work at home, we want the ability to do it, especially if yeah. you're a senior engineer. So yeah, um, I think that's what COVID has, has done is kind of open the door to- It's opened a lot of people's eyes. It's like it can be done, right? I mean, before it was very much so in the office, grinding it out. Now it's more of a, oh, I can still grind it out and get my work done, but I don't have to commute every day, which has yep. been the biggest feedback is like, what's the cost of commuting- you know, if, if you're going to make a change, what's that cost of commuting? That's been a big part of a lot of conversations lately. All right. Well, um, what's been your approach to try to find and place top talent in the geotechnical world? I mean, my, I would say at the very basics of who I am and how my approach is, is, you know, I'm working on everybody else's timeline. I'm, I'll call you and, say, Hey, this is the opportunity that I have, or I'll reach out in whatever way I can. And I'm waiting for you to tell me like, yeah, I'll, I'll have a conversation. And if you will, we'll have the conversation around the opportunity. I'll tell you about it. I'll tell you who the company is. And then you can tell me if it's something you want to pursue further. But I mean, really my whole approach is not, I mean, I'm not trying to, I say it all the time, but I'm not trying to square peg a round hole. I would rather create a win-win situation, have valuable conversations not rush the process, but I mean, I definitely keep fires lit under candidates and clients to keep the ball rolling if everybody's interested in each other. Right. Have you noticed that there's just jobs that engineers fit or have you noticed that um, clients, uh, engineering firms have created a space or created a position around what this client is bringing to the table? What have what have you typically seen or both, I guess? I would say it definitely goes both ways, um, you know, because I even work on the on the aspect of I have people that come to me that are candidates saying, hey, I want to find a new opportunity, but I don't have time to find a job or I don't have the right network. So, you know, it, finding a job is a full-time job if that's what you're committing to and that's what you're doing. So that's where our, our help from the recruiter seat because we have a lot of connections at the hiring level uh, becomes an advantage for candidates. Um, so that's, you know, we'll, we'll market people and help them find jobs. And a lot of the times we'll market people as a potential opportunity hire and companies will be like, we don't exactly need that guy right now, but we could use him. Like we see that there's a very short term future where we can put him to full use. And 
you know, and bring in either different types of business or more business or different types of projects, things like that. And then it's the same thing from the client side is, you, I mean, I have to sell both aspects, right? I got to sell candidates and clients. So I try to get pretty, pretty involved and understand my clients fairly well, the types of projects that they're doing, what makes them unique and not, not just the typical, you know, uh, oh, we have a great work environment, you know, every, everybody and their mom says that and they oh, get culture, there and culture is great. Yeah. Oh, we're all a family here. Like, oh, red flag. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, you can, you can tell the companies that are genuinely that way. And like, you, you know, just because of how many people we talk to, you know, we know which companies have good or bad reputations or questionable and usually can address those when necessary. Got it. Well, what's some advice you would give to, I guess, engineers um, looking to advance their careers, whether it's credentials zero, or call leadership? 208-563-6005. <laughs> <laughs> Give <me a> call. <laughs> yeah, just, just call me, reach out to me. But no, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, uh, and a big reason why you and I are connected is that that PE for those, any engineer, I mean, it's a major stepping stone in your career. Um, if, and I tell people all the time, like if you, if you're on the project management side and you maybe don't see value in having your PE right now, but you're that, you know, six, seven year project manager, but you have a, background of you know your bachelor's your master's is in civil get your pe like the the value of it and having the knowledge of everything that you you know went to school for is a lot more fresh in your mind now than five years down the road where it's you know not having your pe may be hindering your career and having that advancement so get it mm. keep it renewed and then you may not ever actually have to use it but having it is priceless for career growth for opening doors for opportunities so I'm just curious. Um, there's also the PMP for you mentioned project managers. Have you seen a difference in pay or anything between those with PE or those with PMP? Or um, is I have P, I guess is the PE more valuable for a civil engineer? I would say that it is um, because you're able to stamp work. Like the PMP side of things, it's more like okay, yeah, I, I understand project management inside and out. But if you still can't stamp work you know, the, the, your billable rate is just different. Yep. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. Well, do you have a success story, one or two or something uh, that you've gathered over oh, the years that you're like, the, these are some good ones? Yeah. I mean, the beauty of being a recruiter is, yeah, we sometimes have those, you know, the, the quick ones that, that are just, they just kind of happen. There's not a lot of, you know, I would get, I'll call it fluff. Like we've done our job. We found the person. Everybody's happy. We move on. Like that's our base goal of every transaction right but um no i would say that I mean, my most recent uh win was a company up in the kind of the great lakes area they're up in you know ohio cleveland they've had some personal loss there were some deaths in their company of at their leadership level and they've been looking for the right person to replace that person for about two years they've had their own internal people looking they've had you know, trying to work with outside recruiters and and haven't had any luck just finding the right person. Mm. And uh, they, we, them and I got connected and they gave me kind of what they were looking for. And the beauty of doing what I do and understanding the, the aspects that I understand is, you know, they, they give me their checklist, which I respect in most ways, but you know, when they tell me that they're looking for an operations guy, they'd like to have a PE, you know, all the, all the checklist stuff. Um, you know, I, I ended up finding the right guy for them and it was actually kind of an emotional hire for them because they, again, they had a, a, they, it wasn't just like the guy left, but guy passed away. So it's, they, it was an emotional fill. They had a great big shoes to fill. We found the right person. You know, again, they, they required a PE. I found a gentleman who didn't have his PE, but had everything else. And with just being an advocate for the for the candidate, being an advocate for the client, got the conversation started, and they all really liked each other. And it was an opportunity that both parties probably wouldn't have had the initial conversation without me kind of playing the middleman and getting them introduced and telling them why they should talk. Wow, that's so, crazy. That's yeah, a good story. Up, uh, yeah, it was. It's actually it, it's pretty cool because even even the candidate had been looking for a new opportunity since last October, and he <laughs> turned away some offers because they weren't right. You know, it's just one of those things where 
the stars aligned and everybody came together for the right reasons. And now he's off to a great start. He's excited about the new opportunity. They're excited to have him. And yeah, he's going to be doing some pretty cool stuff there in Ohio. Ohio. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Was that one recently like this year? Yeah. Uh, he started, I think middle of this month. I don't remember exactly this month is he started the new job. So that's pretty recent. Awesome. Yep. Um, that's a great one. Any others? Any? Oh man. I mean, there's, there's always there's some, right. Done. In, in some ways, I mean, it's, it's always a win for a recruiter and, you know, people always get touchy when they're talking to us about the financial side, right? Like, oh yeah, people need, you know, I try to explain to people, I'm your advocate in situations. So if you're behind the pay scale by a lot, my job is to get you either back cut up or even potentially ahead and be an advocate for you in all these situations. So, um, this wasn't, this wasn't one that was recent, but, um, you know, I had a, had a guy that uh, he was a PE, kind of like six years experience. I think we, him and I first talked um, and just the opportunity, again, the stars aligned. He ended up getting almost a $40,000 pay increase because he was he was behind. And then the world he went to got him ahead and it's changed his life <laughs> in a lot of ways. And it was like he was in the time of him accepting that offer too. He was having his, I think it was a second kid. So it was definitely a lot of big paradigm shifts amazing timing for him to get something like that i'm sure his wife was happy if he would have turned me down i would have found his wife's phone number like did he tell you what he turned down <laughs> talk to him again yeah i think you need to go talk to him if he didn't talk to you about this i'm going to <laughs> also but no it's just stuff like that i mean that's you know as a recruiter it's you know people you know they they maybe think that like calling us a headhunter is a demeaning name. Like I have a lot of pride in it because I change people's lives for the better in a lot of ways. And again, I'm not a transactional recruiter. Like I actually get to know my candidates. I get to know my clients. So we are, we're making long-term or the intent is long-term uh, placements, direct placements, not contract hires, not anything like that. Like we're doing direct placements hmm. with companies for career advancement. So that's interesting. Yeah. What, um, what advice would you give? I mean, there's a lot of companies that seem to not be able to fill spots with engineers. Not easy. <laughs> uh, it's definitely not easy. Contractors are, you know, yeah. always got job postings. They're always looking for more help and more talent. What advice would you give to companies struggling to find that talent in today's market? Um, I think a, one thing that I see is it, it's a very transactional process um so companies it's just a you apply we'll get back to you if we are interested we'll hire there's not really any personal aspect to it um so that's where i feel like with us as recruiters we can kind of play that third third kind of factor in there is this we're not you know we don't we work with multiple companies we're not just working with one so like if a big company and their internal recruiting team you're applying directly or they're reaching out to you, that's your option. Mm -hmm. But working with someone like us, we get to know kind of what you're looking for. And with us knowing all the different companies, the types of work they do, and just the, our pure network of who we know, we can find the right kind of opportunity, not just a opportunity. Yeah. And I, I don't think a lot of engineers realize this because a lot of them are independent, right? Yep. They want They go out on a website, they go find a job they like, and maybe they go apply for it because they yeah. like it. But there is a, a benefit to using a recruiter yeah. in that you will negotiate on their behalf all the difficult things. Yeah. You're, you're a voice for them. I, I mean, for salary. I'll, for I'll still kick bonus. in doors. I mean, I, my, my whole job is to be a bulldog, you know, and just go kick in doors, go find opportunities. I mean, I do it for candidates. I do it for clients and just finding opportunity hires or candidates. And it's, I mean, my, at the end of the day, I'm networking. I mean, that's, that's what I do is I talk to people in different, different seats and different levels within companies. And I get to know people in that way when I have good candidates or I have a good opportunity, I've got people I can reach out to almost immediately and be like, Hey, I've got a person would you be interested? And it's, it's more, you know, I, I rarely work with HR. I mean, HR is always a process, you know, it's always a step in the process, 
but most of the time I'm working directly with hiring managers. So I'll, I'll put a resume directly in front of a hiring manager and say, Hey, do you need to talk with, you know, you need to talk with this person. And then HR gets looped into the process of just the interview process because they have to officially apply and all that other fun stuff. But we kind of expedite that hiring process versus applying directly and potentially making it to that round bin of whatever company you applied to. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I imagine a bad day is just someone got an offer. I mean, what's a bad day for you? Somebody called me, telling me they accepted a counter offer. That's like the ultimate, like, oh, like we did all the work. We got to the point, you know, you, you shared the, why you were interested in looking in the first place. We found you a better opportunity. You got it. And then you run back to the company. You said you wanted to leave in the first place. That that's always the one that kind of hurts. And I mean, you can Google counter offers. Not very many things are said positive about accepting counter offers and long term effects of that. So, I always try to point people in that direction. But you know, people will be people, and they'll they'll fall back to comfort zone versus you know looking at something different that could be a better opportunity for them. Yeah, I mean, we're all human, right? And sometimes yeah. people don't want to rock the boat with huge changes. But yeah. I think if you're finding something in the same vein as what you're used to doing, but yeah. you know, you're getting paid more for it that's probably a good way to go yeah or i mean we've you know i've helped people move across the country had a guy that was you know in colorado he went to school out there started his career out there but all of his family was in north carolina Hmm. he reached out to me and was like hey i uh, don't know anybody in north carolina that is in my practice can you help me and i think we had three offers for him within two weeks (laughs) And, and they, they need to pay for moving. Expense. Yeah. And they, they help to move. I mean, there's, there's a part of that negotiation process of like, Hey, I mean, he, he wants to make the move. So he won't be the most expensive person to move because he's kind of meeting in the middle a little bit. But if you help him, that helps you land a great, you know, engineer, which are, they're hard to find. There's certain, there's certain pockets of the country that uh, skilled engineers are few and far between. Awesome. I'm curious, are there some sticking points with companies that you know is just going to be an issue like moving expenses? Is that is that a, a sticky point in, in negotiating? Is Some people want sign-on bonus. Is that a sticky point? Or is just negotiating salary? Or is it all sticky? I don't know. It, but, it, it varies by company, right? So, I mean, um, you know, I never play God. I mean, if a, if a candidate comes to me and they're just completely out of my price range, I'll be honest with them. But if yeah. if if we're in the ballpark and and they're able to show that they're worth what they're getting paid, I mean, I will always put somebody in front of a client and say, "Hey, this is what they're getting. You guys gave me this. You know, I'm not the one to make the final decision. But you know, if you tell me that your ideal window is 100 to 125, and this guy is asking for 135." you know, how, 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 how expensive is this role empty to you? So, I mean, I, if they're close to work, yeah. If, if they're close, I'll, I'll find ways to have the conversations and I'll be honest with the client and candidate and just say, Hey, I'll, I'll ask. And if they're open to talking with you, that's, that's their call. But again, it, it's not my job to play God. My job is to go find the candidates that fit most of the profile and get them in front of my client and from there i let them figure out the numbers i help with negotiations and i've turned plenty of people away because the numbers just didn't match up but Mm -hmm. i don't play god because of the numbers do you help with resumes do you help with any of that stuff yeah we we do i mean it's definitely not my specialty we just see a lot of them and we know what people are kind of you know the, the highlight points of what people are looking at um my, I would say my kind of key features are with resumes is try to keep it short and simple, but keep, you know, keep your resume to be a highlight reel. They don't need to have a list of every project you've ever worked on <laughs> that, that gets a little bit ridiculous. Yeah. We start opening up a resume to 15 pages. You're like, Whoa, this is daunting, <laughs> you know? So keep it your, keep it your highlight reel, you know, one, two pages, depending on how senior you are, or, you know, things like that. There are certain things that do need to be on resumes that can take it to two pages, but, and then you can say, you know, project resume uh, upon request, but you don't need to have all this crazy, you don't need to have all information on your resume. It can get daunting. Awesome. What about the interview process? Do you guys help with that at all? Yeah. Um, I've actually helped clients with simplifying their process. You know, one, 
one company a while back, they had like six stages in their process. And it's because they wanted, they wanted them to talk to each person of like, I need you to talk to the multidisciplinary firm. They want you to talk to the leader of each discipline. I was like, can we like combine and let's just align calendars for, you know, an hour in a week? Like, can we make that of interviews? And yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's, I try to tell people like, I, the best way I can explain it and the best way to do the interview process is I you know, have that initial virtual interview if they're not right in your backyard and make sure that they're a fit just on that initial conversation. Then bring them in. And if you like them or if you need feel like they need to do another aspect to an in-person, have them come do that. And then if, if I mean, how many times do you need to be in front of somebody where you know that they're either the right or wrong person, I guess is right. my stance. So. If you have to have them talk to six people in the process, combine some of those meetings and simplify that process. I like it. So awesome. Well, this has been fun. Uh, appreciate giving the update to the market. Yeah. Is there anything else that you would share about recruiting and the job market out there for engineers? Phil, I mean, it's <laughs> recruiting is always a tough world, right? Where you're trying to just chase people down most of the time. So if you're if you're open to a conversation with a recruiter, either actively or passively, um, I would highly recommend. It doesn't have to be me because I don't work in every space, but find a recruiter that is active and specializes in your space or practice of engineering, because they're going to be the best connection that you have and can be an advocate for you. If you're if you're going with somebody that's just like a broad recruiter, recruits for everything under the sun. They're not going to understand what you were looking for as a candidate and a different opportunity to be able to go find you the right opportunity, the right kind of company for you to be a fit for. So uh, that would be my advice in working with recruiters. Just make sure you find one that understands your space and understands it well. Perfect. Yeah. Brandon, this has been awesome. Thanks for giving us the update in yeah. the world of civil engineering out there, geotechnical. Yeah. Um, it's an exciting time to be an engineer. Yeah. And I'm... I'm really excited too. I'm with, I mean, from your world on the, the PE side, I'm excited to see how this new testing format, how it plays out for people. You know, you. Yep. We're revamping everything as uh, we're chatting. Hopefully by the time yeah. this goes out, we've got a ton of that out the door, but we'll. I'm see. actually talking to the AI, Isaac. I'm not even getting the real Isaac. This is not the real. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but but no, I'm. I'm excited to see what happens with it because you, you know, a lot of people I talk to that have missed it, you know, they, they just get down about it. And it's like, well, hopefully now with it being more specialized, you don't have to be as broad knowledge. Like there's definitely pros and cons oh, yeah. to it, but, uh, for the sake of stressing people out that, you know, are good geotechs and can go understand that are good civil or water resource or any other aspect, they don't need to know everything under the sun. They just need to be really good at what they are practicing, which yeah. I like it. So, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely some positives to it, and uh, the more I look into it, I, I think initially it was like, "This is stupid. Like, what are we doing? We're getting rid of all this stuff." And yeah, like people still need to know project management. Like, why? Are, yeah. I, and I still think there are topics that would be still beneficial, no matter yeah. which discipline you go into. Yeah. But now that we've got rid of all the breadth stuff, that I guess it doesn't matter. As much. Yeah. But, yeah. I'm sure there'll be a learning curve with it, and there'll be more changes coming. But mm-hmm. you know, for now. For now, you you roll with it and you go get your PE license. It's valuable. So That's right. Okay. Brandon, <laughs> thanks for jumping on and doing this. We'll make sure to link your information in our show notes. So if you are a geotech or land development uh, engineer, go check them out if you're looking for an upgrade in your career or just maybe tips in general. Maybe. Yeah. So we'll send them your way. Thanks for doing this. We will thanks, see sir. you uh, maybe in a future episode. Sounds good. Thank you. See ya. Yeah.